John Steinbeck famously said that I'm not impelled to squeak like a grateful and apologetic mouse, but to roar like a lion. And that's exactly what Magnum do on this, their latest album. But is it any good? Let's find out, shall we? Welcome Classic Rock fans to an episode of a new album review and today we're looking at the album by Magnum, The Monster Roars. If you're new to this channel be sure to click like, subscribe and check that bell and do check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work done here at the Classic Album Review. The Monster Roars is the type of album we've come to expect from this incredibly creative band, one that has a wonderful and unsung songwriter in Tony Clarkin. A man that has a, an almost brother's gib if melody and an awareness of song structure to rival the uh, any band with interesting mid-sections and anthemic choruses. It's all there. Magnum, of course, are a far cry from the tight, trousered and ballooning falsetto of the Bee Gees. The point I'm trying to arrive at, albeit taking the scenic route, is this band writes some pretty awesome tunage. Magnum are one of those bands that defined the 80s for me. Uh, they fell between several stools, it has to be said, but they were never they were ever present in my house because my brother was such a huge fan. And who could forget the awesome uh, Storyteller's Night? That first performance on ECT, I uh, can't remember what channel it was on, but they were going back a few years. And I saw them several times over the years, more notably the Reading Festival, where they provided an interesting uh, reprieve from that guitar boogie of the Georgia Satellites while providing us with an interesting break or buffer from the uh, the onslaught that would be status quo that came on after them. Magnum have often been a prominent feature of many people's radar, I can't rightly so. I don't know how popular they are in the US. If you're one of my US subscribers, I urge you to check out this album. Uh, the Amazon purchasing links are just below. Uh, if you like hard, uh, thoughtful, melodic rock, I think you'll really enjoy them. And you get those that... A uh, trademark thrum of Tony Clarkin's guitar, all complemented by the beautiful, almost crooning, caramel-voiced Bob Catley. Uh, more crooning than uh, barbaric yop these days, but nevertheless all works together beautifully. Every album sounds fresh to me, including this one. This is a band that are clearly invested in what they do. The lineup these days, if you're interested, is uh, Tony Clarkin guitar and Bob Catley vocals, the uh, Jagger and Richards of the band. Rick Benton on keyboards, I remember when Mark Stanway used to play for them. Dennis Ward on bass, used to be Wally Lowe of course. And Lee Morris drums, I can't remember who played uh, drums for Magnum, you have to forgive me for that. But with this album, uh, the lyrics touch upon the rather fragmented and rage fueled world that we currently live in. Titles such as uh, Blood is Violence, Come Holy Men or Can't Buy Yourself Heaven. It seems to be a spate of very angry albums these days. Uh, uh, Steve Hackett's last album, Surrender of Silence, the new Sticks album, to name but a couple of them. Uh, and this one certainly uh, bristles, shall we say, with ire. If the band will forgive me for quoting from their own website, uh, this album is a well-tempered mixture of typical Magnum trademarks, contemporary influences and trailblazing approaches, which are guaranteed to win this band lots of new fans. Well, let's hope so, eh? And the band's press release announced that even after difficult months marked by pandemic-related concert cancellations, contract restrictions and uncertain perspectives for the whole music industry, the English Rock Act have succeeded in creating a vibrant, homogenous work that impresses its listeners from the first to the last note and includes a number of surprises. And damn right, I'd have to agree 100% with that statement. Um, the opening of this album establishes straight away those classic Magnum motifs, if you like, that salvo of sound that we've come to associate with this band. Um, I think it was Roosevelt that said, uh, grab your audience by their balls and their hearts and minds are sure to follow. Well, Magnum certainly do that on this one. These songs are not lengthy, proggy meanderings uh, in any way, although the band have dipped their toes in, in that specific water. I mean, I remember... Don't Wake the Lion, which uh, I think was about 10 minutes long off the, the wonderful Wings of Heaven album. Um, most of the songs don't really exceed five minutes. There is one song on this album that's about the sort of seven minute mark, but it's the only one. I mean, some might argue that uh, sonically it lacks ambition, or some might say they're putting down a solid rock album, something 
to which we can all cling in these uncertain times. I mean, it does feel like a very confident statement of intent from this band. Uh, great stomping numbers like the present, not the past, and the freedom word. Two standout tracks on an album of uh, standout tracks, definitely two that worth a mention, are the very mid-tempo uh, Can't Buy Yourself Heaven and the piano-led anthem All You Believe In, which very much harkens back to the the older days of Magnum. I say older days because this band had been around since about 1972. I believe that's right, they're, so which means they're effectively celebrating their 50th anniversary. Joni Mitchell uh, famously wrote that the carousel of time goes round and round. And this band have certainly been doing the rounds in terms of tours, uh, which is uh, a bit like Bob Dylan, I think they've been on a never-ending tour. So without further ado, let's uh, talk about some of the tracks. The Monster Roars is a lovely atmospheric opening, which uh, launches into that very 80s style guitar riff and Bob Catley's voice, which sounds very strong on this one, by the way. And the middle section platforms a wonderful guitar solo from Clarkin. It's an arresting and breathtaking number, and it perfectly showcases that Clarkin is still writing songs uh, that very much deal with the, the world that we currently live in. Uh, one defined by fear and increasing polarized opinions. Remember starts with this beautiful guitar sustain and accompanying piano. This is one of the best on the records, in my opinion. Catley's voice expressing almost tremulous vulnerability. Rick Benton had some real depth to the tune with the keyboard and the bass guitar of Dennis Ward really gives the rest of the band a firm platform from which to from which to jump. And as soon as the drums come in, it's just soaring and anthemic. All You Believe in such like excellent keyboard work as well, before Clarkin comes in with a heavy, heavy guitar riff. Another excellent but subtly different vocal from Bob Catley that sees him deliver a strong performance in the... Um, in the in the kind of lower lower regions of his uh, of his range, I think. I won't let you down. One interesting guitar phrasing at the start of this song. This song is my favourite song on the album, without a doubt. You get this drum roll that introduces a fabulous and melodic refrain. It's just an intriguing number, and structurally, uh, it just reminds me of something Jeff Lynne would have written, perhaps. This is a strong start from a band that could go toe to toe with anyone in the in the rock firmament in terms of writing, as far as I'm concerned. As I've said, this is my favourite track on the album. Just so infectious. The present, not the past, begins with that sombre chug, if you like, uh, platforming Catley's voice, which uh, really rings out well in this number, confidently, clearly. Great uh, guitar phrase at one point, reminds me of a ZZ Top, I don't know why, but it segues nicely into the chorus. No stepping stones. This song feels like Magnum meets Huey Lewis. Uh, of course, you get a brass section. Yes, I said it, a brass section in a magnum number, but it works beautifully, creating this huge stomping number. And that freedom word, it begins with that wonderful ethereal, almost Gilmore-esque phrasing guitar at the beginning. Uh, Catley's voice is imbued with melancholy on this one before it roars into life. Your blood is violence. I love the Billy Preston-like keyboards on this one before the guitars had some real muscle to it. This is a song that stretches to seven minutes, but it just flashes by. It doesn't... Um, uh, you know, you don't feel at any point where you, you're looking at your watch when, whilst listening to this. It's a beautiful piece uh, and suitably varied, I think, to hold the, the listener's attention throughout. I love the line, do you know the truth from a lie? A smile from a veil. That's another song, isn't it? A different one. Incredibly infectious chorus, which certainly demonstrates Clarkin's ear for a damn good melody. Uh, supported, of course, by Catley's wonderful, if not slightly weathered voice, a voice that has character, I would say. This song showcases the commitment and the musical nous and virtuosity of this band that has always been apparent. Wake the Silent Hours is um, um, kind of a rock ballad, uh, really, uh, with Catley's voice almost hypnotic in, in this one. You get this swell of almost foreigner-esque uh, synths. The day after the night before is a stomping one, it certainly loosens the fillings. Um, we are the face of the long ages past. I mean, what a line. I mean, songs with lines like that, you've just got to give a listen to. This is perhaps the most Maiden-esque uh, song on the album. It's tackled with such confidence and uh, gusto um, and sincerity as well, which is what marks this band out from a lot of bands. It's they're, they're just, uh, you, you feel that they believe in everything they do and sing. It's, they're just remarkable in that way. Come Holy Men. Great guitar riff at the start. 
Um, it wouldn't be the first rock number to call out the failings of the established church, I suppose, or any established religion for that matter. You, can, you can't hide away from the silence he sings. This, of course, is the penultimate track on the, on the album, and what a track it is. Fantastic, biting, relevant lyrics that, uh, again, demonstrate what a great songwriter Clark, uh, Tony Clarkin is. Can't Buy Yourself Heaven, a deeply satisfying closure for the album. I love the acoustic guitar on this one. Reminds me a little bit of Metallica's Fade to Black. That might just be me though. It's worth remembering when you listen to this album, this is a band that delivered this sort of quality time after time. So it's certainly worth delving into their back catalogue, but you can certainly start with this album. I'd be interested to know what you think of it. If you do purchase this album, the Amazon links are below. It means my channel makes a micro penny or two. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, until then, I hope you're all staying warm and safe and COVID-free. More importantly, that you keep listening.